Hi, I'm Joe Paiva from GeoLearn. I'd like to provide some tips for getting licensed if you or someone you know is thinking about moving ahead with that process. I think the first, thing, the first place to start that's not often covered is ask yourself, do you want the responsibility of being a licensed professional? Are you willing to practice as a professional, which may be different from what you've been doing until now, which is practicing as a technician? Are you willing to work on your communication skills? Again, if you work as a technician, you may not have a lot of experience doing this. And today, being able to communicate in many different ways as a surveyor is extremely important to be successful. Read up on the requirements for becoming licensed. This includes the State Licensing Board, NCWS, and your State Surveyor Association website. There's lots of information here, and I tell people anything that pertains to the licensing of surveyors on these three sites, you should print off, index, and get close to memorizing. A really important part of the application process is not your real resume, the one you maybe bring to a job interview, but your experience record that you derive from that resume. Now your resume is not going to help you a whole lot in preparing the information you need to provide to the licensing board. You need to keep a detailed work history. It really needs to be week by week, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to go backwards in time, but at least going forward, try to do that. And make note of what you specifically did. And what I mean by that is say, I computed these subdivision corners. I determined how to design the road. I evaluated the turning radii on the roads. I wrote the uh, subdivision outboundary description. I set these irons and these stakes for construction and so forth. Use a continuous calendar in something like a wood pro processor and make sure you back it up. Uh, print it out occasionally, but certainly back it up. Or use a field book, uh, at least for those times before you transfer the information from the field book to your continuous calendar. Of course, this field book is not, you, is not what you use for surveying, but you might keep it in your car or in your truck. Besides your work, Licensing boards across the country look for various things and some of the things that are sometimes helpful is your professional association membership, your association and community work that you might have done as a volunteer in various communities and helping to organize things, participating in volunteer activities such as teaching kids something about surveying and training new people in the profession, whether that's at your organization or in general as a, as a community service through your state association or something like that. In some geographical areas of the country, you might actually have to produce these, actually show people examples of the final products that came from your work, like description, surveys, subdivision, plats, but it's a good idea for you to keep a few of these, in any case for your reference, as well as outside uh, information about work you did outside of boundaries, such as um, a particularly difficult engineering survey, or a particularly difficult alignment survey that you're, you're proud of, that you want to be able to actually uh, show some of the related materials pertaining to that work rather than your own description. If you're going to be a professional, you need to have a library, but studying for the exam also requires a library. Now, while you might have some of these books in your business, you should be thinking about acquiring this list for yourself. A general surveying text like uh, Bosler and Moffitt or Wolf and Gilani, a legal principles book such as Brown's Boundary Control and Legal Principles, a writing descriptions book such as the Wattles book, ACSM's definitions of surveying and related terms is very exam focused, but you need to have one of those to be able to look up terms so that you know that the proper meaning for some of these terms, and for the same reason, a copy of Black's Law Dictionary, which can be the pocket edition, which is uh, reasonably small, although it, I challenge you to put it in your pocket, 
or the unabridged version which is quite large. Learn about the exams. So the fundamentals of surveying is computer-based testing and closed book. The principles and practice of surveying is also computer-based testing and closed book. And in your state, find out what the, what the details are. For example, how many questions are asked? Is it computer-based testing? Is it open or closed book? And if it's closed book, what books are you allowed to bring in? What materials are you allowed to bring in? And what's the syllabus that the exam will cover? Find a mentor for this process. It's really helpful to find a licensed person who can walk you through this process and support you, have discussions with you. Find as many test preparation books as you can find as you get closer uh, to the testing date, maybe one year away from it. And similarly, in the final year before you take the tests, start to uh, take as many test preparation courses as you can afford with respect to your money and your time. That's it. Good luck and hope to see you at a surveying conference somewhere.